may we now request the address by Honorable Sri Pranab Mukherjee, former President of India. Good afternoon, Sri Amar Singh, Member Parliament, Dr. Harik Prasad Kanodia, Chairman, World Confluence of Humanity, Power and Spirituality, Sri Hamant Kanodia, Vice Chairman, Sri Sunil Kanodia, Vice Chairman, Distinguished Participants, Ladies and Gentlemen. I'm happy to be with you at the inaugural session of this conclave of humanity, power, spirituality organized by SEDI Foundation. I also take the opportunity to congratulate Dr. H. P. Kanodia and all those who are associated with him in these efforts. This conclave is being conducted annually since 2010 to spread the message of interfaith peace, harmony, and I'm glad to have been a part of it last year as well this year. Ladies and gentlemen, the theme of today's convention is spiritually unfolds humanity. It's of utmost relevance of contemporary times. Spiritually, many times is confused with religion However, it has a much deeper meaning and significance. We think turning spiritual means that one must not be involved with the process of life around himself or herself. But that is not correct. Spiritually forms the support base of the moral and social principles which make a man civilized. It needs to be understood that being spiritual is one of the most intellectual and yet simple ways to live. Only when our intelligence arises beyond the mundane negative emotions, we can turn fully spiritual. Ladies and gentlemen, among the many gifts that India has given to the world and contributed towards civilization itself, one such thing is high philosophy and spiritual thought. From ancient times to the modern age, India has been a beacon among nations when it comes to spiritual leadership. Throughout the ages, And throughout our history, and also in our present days, we have been blessed with great spiritual leaders and teachers, such as Lord Krishna, 
लॉर्ड राम लॉर्ड बुद्ध लॉर्ड महावीर अशोका कवि गुरु नानक रामकृष्ण परमहंस स्वामी विवेकानंद एंड इवन इन द कंटेम्पोरि पीरियड महात्मा गांधी महर्षि रामन मदर टेरेसा रवींद्रनाथ टैगोर एंड सो एन एंड सो फो आवर एंगेजमेंट विथ द स्पिरिचुअलिटी वॉज सच दैट इवन आवर पॉलिटिकल थॉट वॉज एन एक्सटेंशन ऑफ आवर स्पिरिचुअल मूडिंग्स दिस इज ए नेशन वेर द अल्टीमेट ऑब्जेक्टिव वॉज to establish a reign of piety dharma rajya when lord sri krishna tells in gita that his objective he comes through the ages in different incarnations because he finds some basic inconsistencies fundamental deficiencies in the world system which leads to its total erosion of usefulness and it becomes an oppression an instrument of torture and oppression then and then only he comes in his new incarnation makes an end of the distortion of spiritual aspects of our system therefore to us it is not merely a theoretical exercise it is it has a practical application and when i mention that it extends to our political moodings gandhi taught that he did not go in the conventional way of fighting against the colonial rule he thought of satyagraha he thought of non violence he thought of spiritual awakening and thereafter he thought of such an administration where governance will be least today when you talk of the good governance the concept of good governance comes what what does it mean it is not all for wedding good governance does not mean to control every aspect of life by administration by state then it will be a totalitarian state as we had in several parts of the world but gandhi ji thought and he enshrined in the spirit of the indian constitution when it is pointed out and that i think is the linkage between spiritualism and political thinking that we have emancipated ourselves we are going to give a new instrument of administration to us who will offer this new instrumentation after 190 years of british rule the control of colonial masters a country became free a group of people became free a nation became free and to run that free nation it requires an instrument of administration and that administration is constitution but the author of the constitution of india is not 
276 members of the Constituent Assembly. Author is not Sir B. N. Rao, the consultant of Constituent Assembly, or Dr. Ambedkar, who was the chairman of the drafting committee of the Constitution. It was decided that authority should be owned by the people of India. That's why the first word in the Indian Constitution is, with the people of India. Not British Parliament, not anybody else. We, the people of India, have enacted, adopted, and given to ourselves this instrument, which is not merely a legal enactment, but which is an instrument of the social transformation of a vast multitude of people which has no parallel, in fact. After the Magna Carta, it is the great new Magna Carta of socio-economic transformation through peaceful means of a vast multitude of people. Essentially, it is a spiritual exercise. Therefore, Gandhi's advice to the rulers was, govern less less, least governance. That is the best government which governs least. Society must depend on code of moral conducts, and that conducts will come from within, not from outside. It would not be external imposition. It would be internal evolution. As and when it comes from within, without any fear of extortion or without any fear of imposition, then and then only it becomes the true administration, and that is the teaching of the spiritualism. I started my observation by saying, spiritualism is not religion. It is much beyond that. History is full of conflict among religions. Not only today, as a student of history, I have seen how through ages, from the days of Moses, Biblical stories go how Nile was divided to give the shelter to the refugees, to the crusade, to the spread of different religions all over the world, sometimes by violence. So religious conflict is not new. It is part of old history, ancient history, medieval history, and even today. Shape and content has changed. Sometimes it has not changed. All the media, even in India, all over the world, is tremendously worried over the future of Palestine. Future of Palestine is not merely the question of today. Over the years, from the days of Saladin, from the days of Richard the Lionhearted, from the days of Crusade, from the banishment of Jews from their motherland. Therefore, the short point which I'm trying to drive at unless there is a very strong, basic foundation of spiritualism, the foundation of society, foundation of state, cannot be st as strong as we desire to have. I do believe India is a country where people strive for achievement, for personal growth, for balance, and for a deeper meaning of life and existence. 
This has always epitomized our culture and traditions, our philosophers and spiritual guides have always spoken of the need to strive to achieve a higher level of being, to strive towards self-actualization and being compassionate, human and selfless. In today's world, which is becoming even more insular, it is imperative that we use the moral compass to guide us in our thoughts, deeds, and actions as a society. One of the most important things about spirituality is that it elevates us beyond the mundane and the routine. Spirituality gives a superlative meaning to whatever we do. Lord Krishna had said to Arjun in the battlefield, a very simple word, but it contains a very deep meaning. Work with devotion, with righteousness, and selflessly, but don't bother about the results. You have the responsibility and obligation to work, not necessary to enjoy the fruits. Karmanne vadikarasti maafali shukadachanu. And the entire episode and efforts of Lord Krishna in that incarnation to ensure that there is spread of equality, spread of dharma, to establish dharma. And dharma is not a particular religion, a particular dogma, a particular creed. Dharma is a particular way of life. It is the expression of humanity itself. It is the expression of the soul in an atmosphere which is conducive. Another very important aspect of the spirituality as it, it guides how we treat others. Spirituality means embodying kindness, compassion and selflessness. In fact, I firmly believe that humanity leads to the spirituality, being caring and showing compassion to people around us, especially the less fortunate and privileged, and giving them the love, affection, time, and help that they need makes us human. And this is the best possible way to connect with God as well. Service to mankind, is always being treated as service to God. Ladies and gentlemen, our path to greatness as a country will be through our embracing of our rich spiritual heritage, based on bedrock of values that have been part of our culture over centuries. These values have developed to be our civilizational traits, characteristics that define India. We do strive for economic development, upliftment of sections of the people. We need to ensure that we remain connected to our values and culture to guide us to grow in a way that makes us reach in spirit and wisdom and strive for a higher consciousness. I would not like to expand my observations as this is a subject for various people, particularly the distinguished persons who are present there, they will make their observations. But before I end, I would like to observe one more 
observations of Swami Vivekananda when he said, each soul is potentially divine. The goal is to manifest this divinity within by controlling nature, external and internal. Do this either by work or worship or physical control or philosophy by one or more, all of these and be free. This is the whole religion, doctrines, dogmas, rituals, books, temples, forms are all secondary details. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Jai Hind.